Like the iconic motion picture Star Wars, the 1939 film The Wizard of Oz is one of those films that is still widely referenced in pop culture to this day. The very mention of the movie is probably already conjuring up images in your head of munchkins prancing around Dorothy Gale after she crash-landed in Oz. Did my voice change? Um, or maybe it stirs up some childhood terrors that the movie special effects or makeup, excellent for their time, exposed you to. That fearsome twisting tornado. Or maybe those freaky demonic-looking winged monkeys that rip the straws right out of the scarecrow. Ugh. Anyway, uh, the other night Nancy and I watched... The Wizard of Oz, the recently restored version, quite good really, uh, for the first time in I don't know how many years, and we both noticed something far more disturbing than what freaked us out as children, and which occurs near the end of the film. Let me take you back there. Do you remember when the wizard, when exposed for being a fraud, curtain drawn back and all that, thought he'd make up for his shenanigans by giving the four main characters what they'd asked of him earlier on? You know, the scarecrow got his diploma, showing that he had a brain. The cowardly line, <laughs> he gets uh, a medal for bravery. And the Tin Man, the Tin Man gets a heart. Well, kind of. But it's what the wizard says to the Tin Man that had Nancy and I shaking our heads and going, did we just hear what we thought we just heard? We had to play it back to be sure. And we had indeed heard the wizard state the following. Well, here, take a look. And remember, my sentimental friend, that a heart is not judged by how much you love, but by how much you are loved by others. Did you catch that? A heart is not judged by how much you love, but by how much you are loved by others? Really? Let's unpack that. As you might know, the film is fraught with flubs and faux pas that never got nixed from the final cut. So we thought that this might be one of them. Maybe the line was misspoken and the reverse of what the wizard actually said was what was intended. So what do you do? Yeah, we, we searched the Webernet. And there's absolutely no indication that this was a flub line, but a very intentional statement scripted for what was probably the most emotional scene of the picture at a moment when the chances of imprinting something on the human mind are highly favorable. What message is being sent to children then? If you're telling them your heart is not judged by how much you love, but by how much you are loved by others. That's a ter terrible impersonation, sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll posit this. I'll posit that you're setting up a kid to be a creepy little attention-seeking narcissist. I mean, think about it. You're implanting the idea, hey, if you're really loved by others, that's what's important. You're not judged for how much loving you do. Well, th there's just no other way to interpret that line. Uh, by suggesting to a kid, or an adult for that matter, that your value is arrived at by how many likes you get on Instagram and Facebook, or how many YouTube subscribers you've got. Please do so at the end of this film, by the way. Uh, you are truly promoting self-obsession and egocentricism, saying that life is not about how much love you put out there, but how much you're getting is a recipe that was baked up by the denizens of hell. How awful it was to hear this pernicious axiom, this sociopath engendering quote in a children's film. Now, you may think, ah, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. We don't think so, because if you look for this quote on the internet, it has been turned into artwork for sale by way of e-stores everywhere. People actually like and promote this psychotic little adage thrown out there by the bumbling old wizard. Check it out. <laughs> Hollywood, in great part, has long been guilty of attempting to steer our minds away from wholesomeness with their sultry stories of the sinful and the salacious. As a Christian, I figure it's easy to tell from the trailers these days which movies are not going to be very edifying to me as a person, spiritually or morally. But who would have guessed that the highly lauded and beloved classic we looked forward to seeing as kids whenever it was broadcast on TV included a directive that completely undermines the cornerstone, the foundation of love, unselfishness. <laughs> Jesus Christ not only set the standard for what it means to love, but raised the bar on it as well. He said, listen, what's the big deal if you love people who already love you? Even scoundrels do that much. So what if you do good to those who do good to you? Even scoundrels do that much. If you want to be extraordinary, love your enemies. Do good to them without restraint. Lend with abandon. Don't expect anything in return. Then you'll receive the truly great reward. You will be children of the Most High, for God is kind to the ungrateful and those who are wicked. So imitate God and be truly compassionate the way your Father is. That's Luke 6, 32 to 36. 
He also said, whoever wants to become great must first make himself a servant. Whoever wants to be first must bind himself as a slave, just as the Son of Man, that's Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as the ransom for many. That's Matthew 20, 26 to 28. Love is about sacrifice, the giving of your time and energy to benefit others, overcoming conflict, compassion, humility, and can be, well, it can be summarized in four words, putting the self aside. It's not about how much you are receiving or think you're entitled to, as the Wizard of Oz's statement would have us believe. If you're a Christ-following parent and the Wizard of Oz comes on, or you've decided to watch the Wizard of Oz with your little one, Make sure you take the time to talk about the wizard and what he said to the Tin Man and help them learn that not everything that's messaged warmly and sweetly by actors in a movie is necessarily true. Tell them what love is really like by opening the Bible to the 13th chapter of Paul's letter to the Corinthians and reading it with them. <laughs> in Him Who Is Love Everlasting, I'm Martin D. for Flagrant Regard.